Greetings and welcome to our daily devotional. I'm Brian Garnett, a Bible instructor with the Sunset International Bible Institute in Lubbock, Texas. I work with a program called Seniors Adventures in Ministry, where we help train senior saints in the Word of God so that they might be better equipped for works of service wherever God may lead them in their spiritual walk. I'm excited today to have an opportunity to talk to you about examples of our faith. And of course, if we're going to talk about examples of faith, Hebrews chapter 11 would be the place to go. Every now and then in life, someone comes along who is held up as an example of good, an example of boldness, courage, confidence of faith. Well, Hebrews chapter 11 is a whole catalog full of examples of faith. And today, we'll take a few moments to look at the life of Abel. But first, let's start with Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. It says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Without faith, we could never please God. We could never be right with God. So faith is where it all begins. But having faith in God means that we recognize that he is, that he exists and has always existed. And secondly, that God means to reward our faith. Back in chapter 11, verse 1, it says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, and that by that faith, the men of old gained approval, and we can gain approval with God. It says, verse 3, by faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made of things that are invisible. Verse 4, by faith, Abel, offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous, God testifying about his gift. And through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. Now, this is interesting. Abel is dead because Cain killed him, but he, he still speaks. When you go back to Genesis 4 and read the account of the life of Abel, there is never a single word spoken by him that is recorded in scriptures, but he still speaks. His life, his example still stands for us even today. Now, God says that the offering made by Abel was better than the offering made by Cain. So we must wonder why, what made it better? What made it more acceptable? How did one please God when the other did not please God. So we go back to Genesis chapter 4 for the rest of the story. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 says, Now the man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have begotten a man-child with the help of the Lord. And again she gave birth to his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of flocks, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. <laughs> the first thing I recognize is in three verses, we got two boys born and grown up, and their occupations already decided. Obviously, we don't have the whole story. We are only being given a slight sketch of some of the details along the way. It came about, uh, the verse uh, 2 tells us that, Abel was a keeper of flocks, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. And it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstling of the flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. Now we recognize that God must have given some instructions concerning how he was to be worshipped. God's never left it up to the worshiper to choose for himself how to worship God. 
God's word always is clear and plain on this. So Abel brought from his flocks and he brought the first things, meaning the best, and the fat portion thereof, which is the best of the best. He took the very best he could and gave it to God as a burnt offering. Now, in a burnt offering, the whole sacrifice was totally consumed. Only a handful of ashes would be left. So as he gave that innocent animal as an offering to God and saw it ascend as smoke on up to God, he would think as that smoke ascends to God, that's my life. I surrender all. That's me going to God, pleasing God. Cain, for his part, just brought something from the field and gave it to God. We see a difference in their heart. In verse 5, it says, For Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? Our God is a God of second chances. He always gives us a chance to redeem ourselves, to get things right to be right with him. He gives Cain the chance to turn it around. But he tells him, if you don't do well, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you, but you must master it. So sin is seeking the opportunity to destroy Cain and Cain must rise up and master that sin and not allow it to destroy his life. But Cain does not do that. He's filled with anger. He's filled with jealousy. He rises up and strikes down his brother Abel and takes his life. The only two boys were told about on the earth and one would kill the other. Abel had a good heart. Abel was called a righteous man by God. Matthew chapter 23, verse 35, would speak of the blood of the righteous Abel. First John chapter three, verse 12, would tell us that Cain was of the evil one, that he was a murderer and that Abel was righteous. In Romans, in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24, it speaks of the blood of Christ being better than the blood of Abel. For the blood of Christ cries out for redemption and for forgiveness. The blood of Abel cries for vengeance because the innocent was put to death by his brother. God told Cain, you must master this sin. Do not allow sin to have an opportunity to destroy you. Romans chapter 12, verse 14 would say that God always provides a way of escape. If we would only look, if we would only choose, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, God always provides a way out for us. So you and I are to offer our lives to God, that we are to get up on the altar and offer our own life as a living sacrifice. Paul would say in Romans chapter 12, verse one and two, that we are to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable or pleasing to God, that that's our spiritual service of worship. We should not allow the world to conform our life or to change our life to match the world, but rather give ourselves freely, wholly, and completely unto God, the way Abel gave the offering to God. In the story of Cain and Abel, we are reminded of the power of brotherhood. Several times through scriptures, we find brothers often not being able to get along, often not treating each other right. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, Peter would caution us to love the brotherhood. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, he would speak to the church at Thessalonica and say that no one needed to remind them about brotherly love. They already understood and were showing that kind of love to each other. Way back in, in Amos chapter 1, verse 9, Amos spoke about the tire who would be destroyed by God because they did not honor the covenant of brotherhood. Their brothers needed them, and they did not help. They did not respond. They did not honor the covenant of brotherhood. 
God expects brothers to get along. God expects us to care for each other and help each other along the way, to treat each other right. When Cain brought a gift to God, he just gave God some of what was out of the field, not the, necessarily the best. He just did what he had to do. But Abel, Abel chose the very best and surrendered the best freely and completely unto God. That's what God is asking of our life. Give him the best. Remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we put him first. We give him the best. We totally surrender all. And God then can reward that type of faith. For it was by that type of faith that the men of old gained their approval. Have that faith and trust in the Lord our God. May Jesus bless you and give you much peace in your believing.